Hey, before we kick off the video, I wanted to let you know that this uh, talk was not easy for me to put together. And uh, as a coach, you know, a lot of people look to you for support and motivation and inspiration and strength. And when you're going through it yourself, you're having a tough time, unanswered questions, just hardships. That's life, right? Drama, right? This is life. How do you get through? How do you overcome the internal struggles and demons that you're personally dealing with? Well, I hope this talk is an inspiration to you. I gave it uh, just recently, a few weeks ago, at the Cancun, Mexico Mastermind with all our seven-figure mastermind members. Uh, I really was proud of uh, the content that I shared. It came from the heart, and I hope it really inspires you and motivates you. It received a lot of positive feedback. So normally, these talks just stay with our private members who pay a lot of money to uh, attend these events, but I just want to share it with you. So I hope it's inspiring. I hope it's motivating. I hope it's empowering and enjoy. Let's kick it off with overcoming the struggles within. Does anybody here have any struggles? Is it just me? Raise your hand a little higher. Anybody here? Anybody not have any struggles? And you should come up and do the talk? Okay. Well, nobody's going to believe you, so stay seated. All right. So what I want to talk about today is how to stay inspired, focused, and how to become an unstoppable force for good, even during hard times. How many of you guys all feel the pressure of being an entrepreneur? And you got to show up every day, but you're dealing with your own crap. And you got to show up strong and steady and consistent every freaking day, but you got crap that you're dealing with. Anybody relate to that? Yeah, it's tough. You carry a major, you carry a heavy burden. And I feel it myself every single day. So little disclaimer, I am human. I'm fallible. And when I do a talk like this, I make myself very, very vulnerable. And the intention isn't to say, hey, feel sorry for me. I got these issues. The intention here is that I hope that I inspire you to do the same and to be vulnerable with others. Because when you're vulnerable, it leads to an opportunity for connection. And when there's connection, there's trust. And when there's trust, you can grow together. So the reason I share this is because you guys are intercepting a lot of people's lives who are struggling. They're going through wounds and healing and just trauma from their past. And we have this opportunity to be relatable. That is one of the greatest gifts you can give your people. Not your education, not your entertainment value. Being human and relating to people on a human level. You guys all know the difference between a coach and a therapist? A coach looks into your future. And we got a lot of coaches here. You guys are coaches. You guys help people look into their future. A therapist helps you look into your past and helps you figure out the stories that you tell yourself and the story that you're living in. And a therapist helps you understand why you communicate with yourself a certain way. And that's pretty valuable because you're talking to yourself more than anybody else is talking to you. So if the talk that you're sharing with yourself is negative, it's going to influence your behaviors and your beliefs. So we need both and you're gonna get a mixture of that through the weekend. So if you're feeling like, wow, we're kind of going under the hood right now, that's because we might be. All right, so I just wanna set that expectation that we need therapists in our life and we need coaches in our life, all right? Sometimes you just go, 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 go and we don't understand why do I keep going, going, going? Well, maybe there was a wound when you were younger that you haven't addressed and you were told that you weren't worth anything unless you ran a certain race at a certain pace and finish at a certain time. And your whole life, your life's become a metaphor for just running and trying to achieve and accomplish and prove yourself to maybe someone you didn't prove yourself to when you were younger. And we don't understand why do I keep going, going, going. And we have to have that conversation with the therapist and find out that you've never grieved that loss from the past. And that's why you can't stop. And that's why you find your identity and achievement. And, and each one of us has to figure out why we operate in do what we do. I just want to share that. All right. So we need both. I have a question for you guys. Where do our negative thoughts come from? Other people? Where did, where do our negative thoughts come from? Did anybody wake up this morning and say, man, I wish my negative, my negativity coach would give me a call today and help me plant some negative thoughts in my mind. 
Where do our negative thoughts come from? The past? Uh huh. The story we tell ourselves? Our fears? Anybody go to bed last night and say, I want to wake up to a ton of nightmares last night? How come some people go to work and they have the same traffic every day and one person's happy and one guy's mad? How come one person goes through the pandemic and comes out of it happy and another guy comes out of it mad? Where do our thoughts come from? Why would we choose sabotaging thoughts? If we can choose our thoughts, we can choose negative thoughts and positive thoughts. Why do we choose negative thoughts? It's always because when we're, from a lower, when we're operating from a lower state of mind. We have a higher state of mind and a lower state of mind. And that lower state of mind is when we believe that there's something wrong with us and there's something broken. Right? And we believe that there's a story that's true but it's not true and it's not supporting our higher self. And we're maybe listening to the wrong storyteller. And we get stuck in a story that isn't moving us forward. And what I've learned a lot about our thoughts and what I've learned about my thoughts is they're much like a roller coaster. How many of you are like one moment you're in a great mood and then the next moment you're in a bad mood? Like, what the heck? I'm all over the place here. It's like a roller coaster, right? It's an ebb and flow. And we have to appreciate that our thoughts are much like a roller coaster. And sometimes we just need to get to the next high. We're going down the roller coaster and we're like, oh, I want to get off. I want to get off. How many of you guys just want to get off the roller coaster? You're stuck in those negative thoughts. But then you go around the corner, down the bend, it's, you know, wow, this is awesome, this is amazing, this is amazing. And I think one of the things we need to understand as entrepreneurs is we just need to stay on the roller coaster. Don't jump off. How many of you have been tempted to jump off? Don't jump off. Stay on the roller coaster. Ride it to the next high. Ride it to the next up. And this past weekend, I got to hear from a, a great speaker. His name's John Gordon. And uh, he, spoke around, he spoke about negative thoughts, and he talked about the five Ds that lead to sabotaging thoughts. And I just wanted to walk through them. And you guys want to definitely write this down. I have a slide here. I'll put it up in a second, but I'm going to have you guys listen here first. So there's five Ds that, le that lead to self-sabotaging thoughts. And the first D is doubt. Doubt was when I had a guy email me when I first launched my muscle building business and he said, you have no business being a muscle building coach. You're not bigger than the average guy in the gym. You don't even look like you lift. Do you even lift, bro? Do you think that created some doubt in my mind when I first started my business? That doubt led to negative thoughts. It made me self-conscious every time I went on camera. It made me do 300 push-ups before I hit record. Doubt. And then there's distortion of the truth. How many of you have been told that you're selfish? You work too much. You just care about yourself. Is that the truth? I know a lot of you, like personally. And you guys are not selfish. You care. You truly care about serving other people. But the negative thoughts come when we distort the truth. Maybe your priorities are just a little misaligned. But you're not selfish. Though we think, we internalize that too long and we start to believe, huh, maybe I am. Maybe I'm just doing this for myself. The third D is discouragement. This is when we dwell in the dumps. This is when we disempower ourselves. This is when we feel sorry for ourselves and we start blaming life for happening to us and not for us. How many of you guys get caught up in just discouragement? So easily defeated. You get one little setback and it's the end of the world. This creates a lot of negative thoughts. Four. The, four D, the fourth D of sabotaging thoughts is distractions. Getting pulled into different directions. Anybody getting pulled into different directions right now? Three different coaches, three different tactics, three different strategies, three different meal plans. <laughs> You know why you're stressed out? Because you're not sticking to the one plan. You stick to one plan and you won't be distracted. It's very normal, but this can create negative thoughts. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. You're like, ah, maybe I'm never going to make it. Maybe this wasn't meant to be. It's just because you're distracted. 
And the fifth D, the self-sabotaging thoughts, maybe the most dangerous D, is divide. Divide is when you believe the lies. It's when you put a nail in the coffin and somebody says, this is your reality. You were never meant to be somebody. You will be a nobody. You're going to be addicted to this vice, this bad habit that nobody knows about the rest of your life. You're never going to be able to conquer this part about you. And you accept that lie to be your reality. And you live the rest of your life in this lie. You know, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I was raised to believe that the devil is a liar. And sometimes we get stuck in lies that are not serving us. And we need to acknowledge them. And we need to know that they're not. Because when you allow the lie to be true, you separate yourself from yourself. There's no more oneness. There's division inside. Does that ring true for anybody or just me? So how do we get over these lies? How do we get over these? How do we get over these these? Which one resonated with you guys the most? Just shout it out real quick. Which one? Distractions? Discouragement? Divide? Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, great. All right, here we go. Let's dive in. If you guys want to take a quick shot of that, there they are. And that's credit to John Gordon. He just shared that. I just put that in the slide deck this morning. I thought it would be really helpful. All right, number one, overcoming the struggle within requires shifting your identity. How many of you find you put way more, way too much stake in what you do versus who you are? How much you make, your material possessions, the things that can be seen publicly, not privately. And one of the things that's really easy for us entrepreneurs to get caught up in is finding our satisfaction and our happiness in our progress and in our income growth. And if things are going well, how many of you are only happy if things are going well? <laughs> it's okay, you can raise your hand. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because now, if things aren't going well, well, guess what? Then your identity is attached to something you can't always con control. So what I've had to do, and what's been really helpful for me, is to start just shifting my identity from a businessman and an entrepreneur. And for some of you, you know, you're a son of God. For some of you, you're a daughter of God. I've had to really embrace my faith. I grew up in a Christian home. Just because you grew up in a Christian home and your parents you know, take you to church, it doesn't mean your faith is internalized. It doesn't mean it's something you live out. And I've had to really figure out, do I trust God? Do I believe that he's come to give me a purpose and not to harm me, but to give me a hope and a future? Do I really believe that? Do I believe that promise? And I've been, I've been forced to really realize that not everything is in my control. I can control my reality, but I can't control everything around me. And I've had to embrace the things that I can control. Specifically, um, you know, being a spiritual leader for my family. And starting to realize that if I'm putting my dreams and my ambitions before them, guess what? I'm not going to have the support I need to go out and do my own stuff. And I was challenged recently by a therapist and he said, Vince, what if you were to set your day around making sure everybody in your family was taken care of. So much that your wife, your partner, your kids say, hey daddy, why don't you go do something? Why don't you go build a business? Why don't you go work on your physique? Why don't you go do something for you? But you've taken care of everybody in your world first and foremost. Would that be a good life? Knowing that you served first and foremost? And I think a lot of us, we, get this, we, we forget who we really are, and that's, cre that's what creates that intention because we know that we're not serving where we need to serve most. So while I'm gone, I'm here without my family. I'm sending text messages. I'm sending video messages. Before I left, I left little scripture notes on the frig refrigerator. My kids send me their uh, screenshots of their devotions and I read them before bed. I sneak out of the events while I've been traveling. And I just I send funny memes. And I make sure I stay connected. I want to make sure that they feel supported even while I'm not there. 
And these are things that we can put in place to know that if I go to work and crap hits the fan, well, guess what? My family didn't get screwed over too. I'm the spiritual leader of my family, all right? The third thing that I find my identity in is this new thing I love called lit. And this is who I see each and every one of us as, a leader inspiring transformations. It used to be leader impacting transformations, but you can't technically impact somebody. You can, but they have to do the work. How many of us know that? We can show up, they gotta do the work, right? We can't even motivate people because motivation is fleeting. What we can do is show up as our best self and we can inspire people. And that's what, you guys are not coaches. You guys are not trainers. You guys are not nutritionists. You are leaders. And a leader knows the way and shows the way. See yourself as a leader. You're a leader of men. You're a leader of women. And you guys are inspiring transformations and that's what's gonna keep you lit. You guys resonating with this? This is who you are. Hey guys, I'm feeling like crap today, but I made a commitment to show up and serve you guys today, I'm here. Frankly, I'd rather be somewhere else. If I made this commitment, and a commitment is a decision, commitments are not feelings. So embrace a new identity. And we're gonna do this together. You guys ready to embrace a new identity? Maybe two of the most powerful words in the dictionary. I am, I am. And let's identify who are you? And I'm gonna tee you guys off and I would love to hear from a few of you guys. I am, I am humble. What is humbleness by the way? Humbleness is when you don't project more than who you are. And humbleness requires courage. It takes courage to know what you're bringing to the table and what you're not. That is humbleness. It's not arrogance. Guys who, yeah, yeah, you look at me. The guys who are the loudest, they're the most insecure, they have the most self-doubt, and they're the most fearful. If they were humble, they wouldn't need to do that because they would know who they are. So when you see these guys loud on social media, screaming at the top of their lungs, oh man, that guy seems so confident. He's not. He's projecting an insecurity, over insecurity. Faithful. I am faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? Faithfulness means that you're responsible for the little things in your life. Before the large things. If you're not honest with the large thing, with the small things, you don't get the right to be responsible for the bigger things. That's faithfulness. Being entrusted with the little before you're entrusted with the law. I'm faithful for the little. Oh, my following's only this big. I only have this many clients. You're not being faithful for what you have. I am grateful. Grateful is probably one of the greatest mental lubricants you can ever have. I'm teaching my kids this new thing and, I, and I'm telling them like when they're fighting in the back seat, I'm trying to help them understand, they might be a little too early to understand this, that they don't deserve anything. So when they say, it's my toy, it's my toy. I'm like, John Luca, what do you deserve? Nothing. <laughs> and if I can get my kids to believe that, <laughs> I don't believe anything, I don't deserve anything, then guess what? I live every moment in my life as a gift. How do most of us go through life? Entitled. Spoiled little brats. A lot of us act like teenagers. We're spoiled. We're whiny. We're bratty. If you look at every single thing happening in your, today, in your day today as a gift, do you think you'll be a little more pliable? I am grateful. I am grateful. I am loving. I won't dissect all these, but I want you to take a second to figure out who are you. I am patient. You think this might help with your business when it slows down? I am loving. You think this might help when you get a refund request or somebody expresses disappointment with your offer? I am serving. You think this might help when your spouse says, hey, we need help around here. Hey, I need help. I am focused. You think this can help through this weekend? We get a lot of information. We say, hey, I'm focused. I'm gonna focus on implementing one or two of these tactics every three months. This will all compound, move me in the right direction. What do you need to embrace? I want you guys just to take a second and then just start shooting them out. What do you need to tell yourself every single day? Who are you? I am. Shoot them out. 
Grateful. Love it. Relentless. Relentless. Blessed. Blessed. Enough. Enough. Resilient. Resilient. Forgiven. Forgiven. Powerful? What if we were to tell ourselves that every single day? The next one, overcoming the struggle within requires trusting in a higher power. His will, not my will. That's what surrender is. Has anybody ever said just surrender? I asked my dad on New Year's, Dad, what does it mean to surrender? Sounds weak. And it's giving up your will. It's giving up your hopes. It's giving up your dreams. It's understanding that there might be a different purpose for you. His will, not my will. And this is, this is a tough one to wrap your mind around. And I just want to like, walk through this a little bit. So I think a lot of us, we're told to just say, it's all on you. You know, not always. <laughs> Sometimes there's other things going on around you that's not all on you. There's other th- pieces at play. And what happens is we go through life with this self-reliance on our own strength. And it's just me, me, me. And we really set ourselves up for a lot of pressure. And it's not sustainable. You will break. I have tried it to do everything on my strength. And what I've learned is that what I have to do is go from reliance to faith, freedom, and facts. And I want to unpack this. And I, and I just you know, use this event as a little story. We overcommitted to the rooms for this event. We do things way in advance, and I'm an optimistic guy. I'm always very positive, and we booked a room block at this venue that committed me an extraordinary amount of money. (laughs) And you think everybody would want to come to Cancun, Mexico at the start of the year to escape the winter to get access to an amazing lineup for something they've already paid for. That's a business expense. That is a write-off. That is going to help grow your business when you're in a coaching program That's supposed to help you grow your business. You think you would not think twice, would you not? Must have been pretty easy to do this. It was not. We had to call you guys. (laughs) Not everybody. We had to call members. Hey, are you coming? Oh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. What are you thinking about? I got to think about it. Ah, uh, I got to pay for the hotel and then the flight. And uh, I don't know about that one guy on the speaker lineup. Holy jeez. So listen, getting closer and closer, and I've got this literally a $70,000 contract on my head for the amount of rooms that we committed to. Like, I'm not paying, I can't pay $70,000. And I had to get to a point where I just said, let go and let God. I said, we've already done all we can. And I had to just have faith with the small things. So one, we had Colton call everybody in the coaching program. Colton, you got to call every single person to find out if they need any help with their accommodations. So we had to get, we had to get faithful with the small things. I had to look at the, the speaker deck. Is the speaker deck good enough? Is it, is it going to compel everybody? I had to do what I could. All right? And a bunch of other stuff. But I had to be faithful in the small things. And I had to then choose freedom. Not fear. And what is freedom exactly? Freedom is understanding that nobody can ever take away your ability to focus. That is freedom. I could choose to focus on who's not coming or I could choose to focus on who is coming. And what you focus on expands. And I chose to focus on freedom, the freedom that I had. And then finally focused on the facts. Every freaking time I've run an event for the last 10 years, we've had to push people up until the last week. And I had to just remind myself, oh yeah, It takes forever to get somebody to come to an event. You have to push, 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 push. This is not an ordinary. This is ordinary. I have to remember the facts. That 75% of people make their decision in the last 30 days. And I have to remember the facts to help me through. So this this is how you get through tough times. Is this helpful for anybody? Relatable? Okay, great. So we have to move from self reliance to reliance on faith, freedom, and facts. Next, overcoming the struggle within requires reframing rejection as redirection. Anybody face any rejection lately in their business? How does it feel? (laughs) Why? (laughs) 
Why not? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, so, so what I've learned, my dad taught me this a long time ago. He said that feedback is the breakfast of champions. And whenever you have somebody reject you, let's just say you put your product out. And I've seen this, I know this is a real thing. I've seen this in this group a lot. And we all seen it in the Facebook group, right? Oh, somebody said, somebody wants out of my program because they said my program's no good. And what do we do? We get so defeated. Why not look at that feedback as an opportunity for intelligence? And why not, instead of saying, oh, what's your problem? Oh, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Why not say, hey, I would love to try and understand why you're saying that. I'd love to hear your perspective on this situation. Why not look at this opportunity to say, hey, please don't spare my feelings. I'd love to make this the best program ever. Can you help me understand? Can I tell you the, th the three really dangerous words to never use with your clients? And by the way, don't use this with your spouse either. Never use these three words with your spouse ever, 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 ever again. I'm going to save a marriage right now. I totally understand. Never say that. No, you don't understand. What do you mean you understand? You don't understand. Get unassumptive and ask him, unpack this for me. How can we make this right? What would you have done differently? How could we have done it? You will gain intel. Oh, I was promised this and I got this. Oh, wow. I apologize. I'm sorry that we missed the mark. How can we make this right? Humble yourself and look at these situations that appear as rejection as an opportunity to make something better. You're playing the long game anyways. If you're trying to build a multi six figure, seven figure business, it's going to take you years. All the feedback you get, the better. Guess what? You want to scale to 100 clients? Well, get the feedback from the first 30. You want to scale to 500 clients? Get the feedback from the next 100. This is the intel that's going to help you make your product indestructible. So you want negative feedback. You want rejection. The more rejection, the more redirection. And this positions you for a better platform to build off of. This is what will give you an unfair advantage over your competitors. Is this helping anybody today? Overcoming the struggle within requires living congruently. All right. So when we hit our first million dollar month, that wasn't a lie. It also wasn't the truth. We did have a million dollar month. It was contracted. And it was in Canadian funds. To most people, they wouldn't care. I would love to have a million dollar month contracted. I would love to have a million dollar month in any currency. <laughs> but what happens is if you're projecting something, it's not a lie, but it's also not the truth, then you will feel like an imposter. You will feel like perhaps even a liar. And you will seek chaos and self-sabotage because you will feel like you're not worthy because there's an incongruency. Maybe liar's a little harsh, but there's an incongruency. Can anybody relate to projecting something? Hey, this is what we're doing, this is where we're at, right? And you operate from a place of not getting exposed which is not a place where you can operate abundantly. And what I just encourage everyone to do is to operate from a place of humbleness, and this is where we're at, right? I don't believe anything anyone says anymore. I don't know when somebody says, oh, we're doing X amount of dollars monthly. Like, I don't know what does that mean. Like, what are your profit margins? Is that revenue? Is that contracted? What currency is that in? Like, they don't tell you that. <laughs> but we get all caught up in that. So when you're sharing your wins, when you're sharing your progress, you've got nothing to prove. And if you start to live in this lie that this is where we're at, when this is when we're really at, then your whole, you're just living a facade and you're, you're living under pressure not to be exposed. Who wants to live like that? That is not a sustainable business model to live under pressure that I'm always, I'm always like that, right? Shaky ground to try and build from. Is anybody resonating with this? 
Is it too early in the morning for this talk? Should I stop? You want me to keep going? Okay, you sure? Okay. The next <clears throat> struggle is creating the value for yourself by seeking support. Uh, this is a really, really tough one. <clears throat> what do you do, <clears throat> excuse me, what do you do when you join, let's say a coaching program and you don't get what you expect? Do you groan? Do you gossip? <clears throat> do you give up? We don't. Maybe sometimes we're tempted, but that's classic victimhood. And the key is to understand that you are responsible for finding the value in coming to events like this and joining coaching programs. If you're not getting the value from this event, whose fault is that? Louder? It's not my fault. It's not my fault. If you're not getting the value from this event, that's your fault because you're not going to extract it. You're operating as a victim. And this happened recently at an event I was just at. And the initial offer was this experience that was an extravagant next level and a certain price point that is still the same price point, but it's a very different experience right now. And I could go into this room and I could sit there and look around and say, oh, this isn't the same as the, the first event that I went to. Man, this has really changed. Or I can go to the event organizer and say, hey, who should I do my breakout with today? Hey, I really need help with this. I'm not really resonating with some of the stuff going on in this room and some of the speakers here, but I do know I need this. And if I could get this, I would have an amazing experience. And that's what I did. And I got an amazing idea from somebody who's done $250 million over the last three years to just help shift the Men of Bedrock business model, which is another one of my businesses. I'm like, oh my God, thank God I didn't just leave. And I found a couple individuals in the room and if I could connect with these individuals and build a relationship with these individuals, there might be an opportunity to collaborate with them in the future. And one of these individuals sees a church that has over 20,000 people coming through their doors every single weekend. 20,000 people every single weekend. Can you imagine that? And he wants to do something on the side, a, a business mastermind, something outside of the church. And I built this relationship with him. And he took me aside and he said, I've never told anybody this, but I want to do something with my son. And I want to do it outside of the church. We receive a lot of criticism for anything that we do. And I want to do this and I need help. I need help. I'd love to talk to you about this after the event. I'm like, me? You want me to help you with this? And if I had left that event, I would have lost that opportunity. I was just so struck. So I want to encourage you guys to all participate in the process of life. I'm using the context right now of, of business. But this can apply to every area in your life. If you're not getting something you need, don't express it by asking for a refund or or, uh, you know, ghosting, or... I know that's not what you actually want. What you want is to get help. So express that. But a lot of us don't know how to express. But when we learn how to express what we want, then we can start getting what we want. Does that make sense, everyone? And this is something you need to teach your students, by the way, as well. <laughs> but we need to live that out first in order to get supported. Okay, overcoming the struggle within requires to rethink your role in how you lead in business. I'm sorry to tell you all, I'll keep it real, but you've all been sold a dream. How many of you guys have been told that I want to build a business where my team does everything? <laughs> I'm, just looking, I'm just looking for a coaching program that teaches me how to run a business and then my team runs everything. Eh, doesn't exist, my friend. I don't know anybody that runs that business. It does not exist. Now your role in the business can certainly look different at different stages of the business, but you guys have all been sold a lot of lies. The people that I know who have the biggest businesses are the most integrated in their businesses. Now they might be doing different things right now than they were at the start, but they are working just as much. <laughs> 
The whole idea of lying on the beach while your team runs the business, it doesn't exist. Use like a soccer team, right? You think the coach is on the beach while the team is playing? The coach is on the freaking sidelines yelling at every single person. Hey, you, run harder. You, put it in the net. Hey, you're in the wrong position. You should be playing down here. Business is just like athletics. You're the coach. You're running air traffic control. You will always be integrated into your business. The moment you say, I'm gonna just hire some guys to do my setting. I'm just gonna hire somebody to do my sales. I'm just gonna hire a bunch of coaches and they're gonna run this coaching program for me. And it's not gonna work. What works is that you come alongside and you spend time with your setters. You come down and work with your closers. You come and work with your coaches. You might spend extensive amount of time for maybe, heck, half a year just developing your setters and then developing your coaches and then developing your closers. This could be a two, three, four year process. And then you're digging into learning the ads and you're getting into the weeds. You're never going to get to a point where you just step out and the business runs by yourself. That does not exist. And if you guys can show me one person who has that, I'll show you one liar. All right, just, I've never met anybody. Even my buddy, you guys saw my social stories. I was at uh, Rudy's headquarters, this amazing place in Clearwater. He's given me a tour. There are 125, uh, you know, team members, and it's just spectacular. He's got a room where they have a dressing room where everybody's got to put on red before they come to work. They got a ping pong table. They got a room full of balls for a stress relief room. Uh, how the heck did you do all this? He's like, oh, it was a lot of work. Like, I'm like, how much do you work? He's all oh, more than ever. He's integrated into, he's like, how many meetings do you do a day? He's like, too many. And his wife's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so listen, stop trying to build something that does not exist. All right. You are always going to have your hands in the cookie jar. And yes, there'll be times that you need to delegate. You need to trust. You need to build teams, etc. But <clears throat> realize that you always have the choice of what you focus on. It's okay if you go all in on just one department in your business for the next couple months. That's good. That means you're focused. That means you're building something, right? You're gonna start to hire your assistant, your first coach, like spending a good amount of time with her, inviting her over to your place and teaching her, letting her work over your shoulder. That's a good use of your time. It's an excellent use of your time. You're building something. So don't get caught up in all this crap. <laughs> the team's just gonna run my business. <laughs> The team's just going to run my business. No, they're not. All right. They will try, but if you're not there showing them how, giving them encouragement, building up the leaders, finding out what their goals and desires are, and being aligned with them, they'll check out. And that's a hard part about leadership. This might be the last one. Overcoming the struggle within requires stepping back to understand that nothing is truly a step back. How many of you guys have taking a couple steps forward in your business and then boom, you get hit with something. We are talking about this yesterday, right, Eric? You're just like building, 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 something breaks. Building, 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 something breaks. Building, build. That's the point of business, right? I was talking to Brandon last night. He's bulking up. He's looking to get, what, the 210 or... He said, I'm not sure. I said, what do you mean? Well, when you're trying to bulk up, what do you need to do to reset insulin sensitivity for all of our science guys in the room? We have to do a little mini cut. So we bulk, bulk, up, bulk, then we got to take a step back and mini cut. But what happens from the mini cut? Then we learn how to partition those nutrients better. Bulk, 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 we get a little bigger. Then we got to do a mini cut. And then we bulk, 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 and then we have to do another mini cut. So every time you have to take a step back in your business, it's not a step back, it's repositioning to take a couple steps forward. And this is what we need to appreciate. How many of you guys all get stressed out after a massive month in December? Massive Black Friday, huge month, right? Yeah, oh my God, what's gonna happen this next month? Well, hey, guess what? This month, you get to learn to talk to your tax accountant to set up a separate account where you set up a drip account where all the paid in folds go somewhere so that there's not as much food in the drawers to go eat, <laughs> right? So we learn something about how to manage your cash flow. It's not a step back because we had a a slower month than a big month. It's a step forward because we're learning now how to manage our cash flow better. We put all this time into training somebody, training somebody, training something. We fail to forget what their motivations are and they quit. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I got to go through this process again? 
This crap again? If you're not saying that on a daily basis, it means you're not growing, by the way. <laughs> if you're waking up to crap this crap again, Frank, you got something? Okay, I'm done. Yeah, 60 seconds. That's normal. That's normal. So just realize that every setback is a set up for the future and to build a stronger foundation to build from. And we all understand this as fitness people. That's all for today. I would just love for you guys, maybe let's just take 60 seconds and I'd just love for a few of you to uh, share. What was your biggest takeaway for you today? And what was most helpful for you? What did you need to hear?